The following program is brought to you by Caltech. <laughs> so, has any of you guys ever thought of how we see and why we see? Actually, many of us take for completely granted our ability to see the world around us. It's no big mystery after all. We wake up in the morning in our bedroom, we open our eyes and look. And when we do, we see all the beauty of the world around us. The colors, the textures, the shapes, the objects, the people. All these entities and their relationships, the blue square, the two people who are talking, they all come for free, as in free beer. However, as a computer vision scientist, I learned that there is no such thing as free beer. <laughs> Let me explain. The process of image formation, let it be in an image on a computer, so as pixel representation, or on the back of our retina, is determined by a multitude of complex physics and optics laws. I don't even know them. Uh, but there's also an uncountable number of factors which affect our perception, such as light condition. You see me worse now, don't you? <laughs> or occlusions. If I put my hands on my eyes, even though I'm still here, it's difficult for, I mean, it's very easy for you to say that I'm still here, even though I'm putting my hand, my, the hands on my eyes. And, uh, but it gets even worse, because in fact, this is not even what I study, because computer vision is known as an inverse problem. In fact, it's quite the opposite of studying how an image is formed. It's more going from an image from an object to the understanding that we perceive from that image. For this reason, computer vision is called an inverse problem. You're actually trying to go the other way around. Uh, but I know what you guys are thinking. You're probably bored. <laughs> You're thinking, what are you doing here? Why did you come? It's a lovely day outside. There's a sunset right now. So let me give you a few examples that can try to make you understand something more. Have you ever taken those pictures with a friend that goes so far away in the back that when you actually shoot the picture, it seems like he's a little midget on your shoulder? Hands up. <laughs> I've taken plenty, so no shame. <clears throat> actually, it's very difficult to think of an algorithm able to say that that friend of yours is not a midget, but he's just a real fun guy even though for us it's so easy, given a picture. Another example could be given a single shot, a portrait picture of a person in front of you. How can you think of recovering the distance at which that picture was taken without any additional information? These are all very complex problems. Is that a zebra or is it a pillow with stripes? This is also a very difficult problem. So, these are just a few examples of why I am so fascinated by the world of computer vision and why I got trapped in this world and the reasons why I wake up early in the morning, I stay all day on my desk in front of my computer. It's because of the curiosity that gives rise to me. And so when tomorrow morning you guys wake up in your bed and <laughs> You open your eyes, and you look, and you see. Just take a moment and think of me. <laughs>